Today, I'm gonna be, be making Granny's Shoe Fly Pie. This is a recipe from Gooseberry Patch Church Suppers. Um, we're gonna go over all the ingredients first. You need one teaspoon of baking soda, one cup of hot water, half a cup brown sugar packed, three eggs beaten, one cup of molasses, and I left these out. These are just the grandma's molasses original. And then you need a nine inch pie crust. This is a Marie Callender frozen. It's a deep dish pastry pie shell. Hopefully that's okay. That's what Walmart has. It's the only one they had, honestly. Um, well, they had great value, but they, they were, were all broken. They were broken <laughs> all to pieces. That's what you need for the, the pie. Then there's a crumb topping. For the crumb topping, you need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of brown sugar packed, and half a cup of shortening. So we bought this Crisco, this is shortening. Uh, it's a baking stick. You buy it in the baking um, aisle in Walmart, like where the spray, like the vegetable spray and stuff, that's where these are. And this is, is half a stick, half of one of these sticks. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna take our hot water and our baking soda. We're gonna dissolve that into our water. And then, basically, we're going to pour the, uh, the rest of our ingredients into this, our eggs, brown sugar, and molasses, and mix them in, the, in this bowl with the water. So I'm gonna take this bowl and I'm gonna set it to the side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna make our crumb topping. We have our flour and our brown sugar and get ready to use your hands and just mix this using your fingers. And then we're gonna take our shortening and mix this in with your flour and brown sugar. Okay, so we're back to our molasses mix. I'm gonna pour half of this mixture, I'm just gonna eyeball it, uh, pour half of this mixture into the, the pie crust. kind of hard to tell so I'm sure it won't uh, ruin anything <laughs> and then you take a fourth cup and uh, of your crumb topping and you're gonna put the fourth of a cup all around this mixture and then that's not much and then you pour the rest of your molasses on top and I don't know what they, I don't know what that did for it. I don't but. know what that did for it at all. And that goes. I, Kevin was wondering when we bought the deep dish pastry. Kevin thought he he's like I don't know if this is going to work or not. Uh, I'm saying now you need to buy the deep dish pastry. Yeah, for real. Uh, and I don't even know how all this is going to go on top. You're supposed to use. I mean, this is quite a bit of crumb topping. I have no idea, without it running everywhere, how you're supposed to put this on top. I'm trying to get it to the edges to where I can kind of like keep the liquid in. Like I'm going to put my hand up here. Like I'm forming a seal around the edges. That's how I'm going to do it. And that way it won't, uh, hopefully it'll keep that liquid in. I'm going to do that all the way around the edge. And then when I bake this, I'm definitely going to be getting a cookie sheet out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to be, I'm going to uh, uh, move this over to a cookie sheet and definitely do that because I can see this making a mess. It is a very, very liquidy. Um, and I still don't see, I mean, that's a lot of crumb topping. It's, it's like the measurements are wrong or something. 
Mm-hmm. What's funny is it just says a nine inch pie crust. It doesn't say anything about a deep one or anything like that. No. This is... No. And look how much of this I have left. And I mean, I have like, I'm afraid it won't bake if I put all that on there. What do you think, Kevin? Mm. I mean, I just, that's, it's like the measurements are wrong. I'm going to stop it at that because I just, I, I don't think I can get all that on there. Without I, overflowing it? Well, I'm, it's not even overflowing it. I'm afraid that it won't, oh shoot, look, oh my gosh. Yeah, the, it's, the more you put on top, it's going to push out the liquid. What do they call that in a Christmas, uh, um, a Christmas story? It's a clinker! I think I wouldn't put any more on because it's just going to push all your liquid out. Okay. This is this is a mess. We're gonna put it on a baking sheet. We're gonna put it on a baking sheet. Um, it has to bake at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Then you're gonna reduce your heat to 375 and bake for an additional 50 minutes. I want to I want to show this to you. Um, <laughs> we put a piece of parchment paper on that baking sheet. It did no good. Um, we should have used uh, we used one of the cookie parchment papers. We should have used a regular parchment paper and had it going up the side because I'm going to have a time cleaning off this pan. Um, but after uh, we've switched our time, we're going to go for 50 minutes now uh, for at 375 and it is still, uh, you can see it's still dripping out uh, the side of the pie. This is how it looks after 50 minutes in the oven. Um, it, uh, <laughs> it's going to be uh, horrible probably to clean this pan but just ignore that and try to focus on the pie the pie looks actually looks really good after being in the oven for 50 minutes the recipe does not say whether to let it cool completely it doesn't say to serve it at room temperature warm um hot it, it does not say um whether you want to eat it hot or cold it does say it serves eight so we should be able to get eight slices out of it Okay, I just went on Google and I typed in, is a shoe fly pie eaten warm? The answer is yes. Uh, because of its ingredients, a shoe fly pie will keep nicely on your countertop for a few days. Simply ensure that it's completely covered to keep it fresh. You can refrigerate it if you wish, but traditionally it's eaten warm. So I think I'll let it sit here for probably 15 minutes so that it's not like molten and then we'll come back and I'll slice it. So what I'm gonna do is, this has been sitting here for about 15 minutes. I'm going to move this pie over to this plate. I have a spatula here, and I'm gonna kinda use my little glove here to... Yeah, look, it's... Glued. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like glued to the bottom. But I wanna take a picture, um, Thank you, Kevin. I want to take a picture and I don't want it to be on that. That would scare people if they saw that and I don't <laughs> want to scare people. Um, I'll probably, at the end of the video, I never do this, but since this is so different, this doesn't usually happen. If you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'll show you what it looks like when I pull that up. I'll, I'll get Kevin to film it. Now it says you're supposed to get eight pieces. actually looks pretty good and look at the color on the next one so now we'll take it over to the table and give it a try so this recipe was submitted by Christy Boyle in Easton Maryland uh, she said my children love it when we go to granny's house and she has just pulled a shoe fly pie out of the oven so um, like I said, it really, it, it didn't tell you whether you were supposed to wait or not. That's the only thing um, about some of these recipes because they are submitted. Some people go into more detail and you would just, some people would just assume that you would know that. If you've never had a shoe fly pie in your life, I, I don't know how to, no. Um, so here we go. Yeah, that's the only thing bad about submitted and not tested recipes. Yes. Is if they're taking them just as they're submitted and not trying it themselves, they would never realize you need to add that step. I do think though, that as far as the crumb topping, I think that um, hmm. 
it it had way too much i think you could have gotten away with a half of everything instead of well the liquid was too much too the liquid was too yeah really yeah so i it's like i hate to half the whole recipe but you probably could have half the whole recipe mm -hmm. um just because it just seemed like it was too much of of everything um so of course if you dropped your if you made the full thing first of all the flavor is is different um i can't imagine a kid liking that but you never know um i know it's very molassesy yeah and, and our very, kids didn't grow up on molasses no and it's kind of uh it's not quite jelly like it's kind of gelatinous in the middle it's kind mm -hmm. of rubbery and chewy but not mm -hmm. chewy chewy just kind of rubbery and thick mm -hmm. um that's a weird texture but when you're baking it if what i would do is make, make just like they say but instead of filling it up as full as we did because we didn't know um instead of filling it up as full as we did maybe leave it like at half of the liquid um half full mm -hmm. and then add your crumb in there right and it would have not push the stuff over the edges right much. yeah this but if you put too much crumb in there it's gonna be really dry because that crumbs i mean it's good but it's very dry if you've ever uh bought a uh, mincemeat yeah kind of reminds me of that, if you've ever glasses. bought a jar yes of mincemeat they ha get it out at walmart at christmas um it doesn't have the spices mm. and it doesn't have the the stuff the, 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 the raisins and the stuff like that yeah, yeah it doesn't have that but that thick molasses that sweet flavor mm -hmm. it does remind me of that and this eating this i actually do like it 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 is different um it reminds me of something like old-fashioned mm -hmm. like when you read like a Laura Ingalls Wilder book, you know. Um, they would have. It, it, yeah, this seems like something that that it would be very old fashioned and take you back to just the simple days of of, of baking. That's what this reminds me of. Mm -hmm. It's a very old school recipe. It's not bad. It's not a flavor. I would rather have like a cream pie of some kind, a sweeter pie. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's not very sweet. I mean, it's did you it's try got just the crust? No, but that's just a, that's a depends on what brand of crust you buy, so. Oh, well, <laughs> we that's make true. The crust, so. That's true. It's, yeah, it's just the Marie calendar. But some but the people, crust, the crust some is people good. would wonder if that no, was good. The crust is good. It's a good crust. It's a good brand to, to buy of pie crust. It's I like flaky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pie crust is 100% good. Mm -hmm. I like the crumb. I like the texture of, of the crumb and the crust. The gelatinous kind of texture, I don't know. It's, it's a little weird for me. Really? Yeah, it's see, I like, like it. It's kind of like the texture of that goop you get on canned ham. You know, that, that <laughs> yeah. fat that's gotten kind of jelly-like? It is. That's kind of, it's up to even thicker. Um, yeah. It's kind of that texture. It doesn't taste like that, of course. But it's, but it's the of, texture. Yeah, if you know like, that texture. That kind of gelatinous, kind of but it goopy did, texture. It did cook really well. I was oh. worried that because I put that crumb topping on so thick, that it wasn't gonna to bake well. I then I worried that when I when it said 50 minutes, it didn't give you any range. I thought it's gonna burn for sure. Yeah, she said that's gonna come out black. <laughs> I, I said it'll come out black. You know, it's gonna be horrible. It didn't. Mm -hmm. it, it actually, you know, for for the mess that's going on with the pan, it's actually really good. Mm -hmm. Just don't expect a traditional sugary sweet even though it, it does have all those molasses it's just not it's a different kind of sweet than what we are accustomed mm -hmm. to yeah. but i still like it and you can really see on your piece you can really see where the liquid soaked into the crumb yes on the top it's got like a layer of a lighter layer it's a lighter thicker. layer yes i wonder if you told it maybe to like i said it wasn't in the directions but i wonder if it when you put that fourth cup in there first if you let it set for a minute and like soak in i don't know i didn't really say all I can do is what they say. Yeah. And the only way you would know for sure is if you looked at another recipe and see what they said. See if exactly. they say anything different. And, and compare them. So, uh, yeah, Shoe Fly Pie, the only reason I even uh, know it is because there was a song. Mm -hmm. And and I and I learned the song when I was a little kid at summer camp one year about Shoe Fly Pie. And uh, so that's that's why it's like i saw it and i i had to make it but i'm glad we made it because yeah, it know. is this it's is different it's rustic it's very rustic very different it honestly it brings to mind like old school like thanksgiving 
that time uh, with just a simpler time. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you've ever made one, you can absolutely uh, let us know uh, the differences in the recipes because we did, Kevin and I both read it. So you know it was right if Kevin read it at least. Um, but if you wanna see the saga with the pan, stay tuned. Normally I don't put this in the video, but I'm sure <laughs> you're curious to see what that's <laughs> like gonna look up. like. Yeah, we'll see what happens when I, when I take the parchment paper out of the pan. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. So, if you had used a piece of a regular piece of parchment paper, then you could have made it big enough to go over the pan. Yeah, I didn't think about it. That was so, my fault. This is just one of those Reynolds baking sheets. Yep. I never thought it would run that much, or wow. I would have uh, I would have used a bigger piece. It's like it's, it's cut and brittle. Get your spatula underneath there and scrape it a little bit. Well, this is just tear on the paper. I want to get rid of the biggest part of it first. We have a garbage bag over on the side. <laughs> well, that popped right up. But that's paper. Yeah, this is the paper part. It's actually not that bad, as you can see. So I'm gonna, I'll run very, very hot water uh, to loosen this up, and it's not near as bad as I thought it would be. So don't be afraid to make it if you're interested in it, because it, it wasn't as bad as I thought.